Hey folks, uh, you know it's just really weird to me how projects come around in sort of cycles. I just pulled that other 89 Fender or Squire bullet out from uh, storage to do a quick tip on how to adjust pickup height. And then this one came up for sale and I grabbed it. It's an 87 Squire bullet contemporary. And you know, just when I think I bought the guitar that's in the worst shape that I've ever bought, you know, I, I tend to top myself and this one is nasty. So, um... You know, it's uh, it's going to be a lot of work, but uh, we're going to give it a shot and see what we can do with it. Um, it's rusty, and it's got all kinds of junk on it. It's missing parts. Um, <laughs> you know, the guy was nice enough to tell me it was missing one of the bridge saddle screws, but man, that is not the least of its problems. So, anyway, um, the necks on these things are absolutely wonderful, and I don't know um, if you've ever seen them before, but... They've got a Telecaster heel and a Stratocaster headstock and vintage, you know, thin frets and this really glossy finish on the back, kind of like an MIJ um, Stratocaster. So, uh, anyway, they're cool. Made in Korea. Very 80s. Um, I really haven't ever heard the contemporary one before, so I don't know what these single coils sound like or that humbucker, but you know, I'm interested to get into it, so... I'm gonna take my tetanus shot and start taking this thing apart. Okay, well, I guess I'll check and see if this neck has any relief in it at all. Um, it's The way it's set up right now with just three strings, I'm, I'm really not even interested in trying to string it up. Um, I'm just gonna grab my little scale ruler over here um, and see what's going on. So let me get that. Okay, it does have a little bit of relief in it, but it's uh, more or less straight. And I, I'm going to attribute that right now to the fact that it's only got half the strings. And the ones that are on it are detuned a little bit. So, um, as long as the truss rod operates, and I know these are a 4 mil truss rod, but as long as the truss rod operates, I think I'm, I'll be in business with this neck. And if it's the only thing I can save on the guitar, it'll be worth what I paid. But we'll see how far we can get with it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the strings off, and we'll start there. Have I ever mentioned that I hate it when people tie knots in the end of their strings? I know I have. Well, let's see here. This is going to be a complete disassembly, so I am not going to deal with this guitar in one piece. Well, it's got a nice body on it. Um, I'm actually shocked. It's solid wood. Uh, I thought it was going to be plywood. In fact, I was preparing for it, so I'm very shocked. Anyway. Huh. Full-size tremolo block. That's weird. Full-size pots, but I uh, I hate that crappy plastic switch that they used to use on these old uh, Asian squires. Um, full-size trim claw, the width is is good. I bet that's a full-size cavity, which is actually kind of strange for a Asian. But anyway, looks good. That tone pot's been glued together, and it will no longer hold up. Wow, that is a weird tremolo. Yeah, that's bizarre. What makes this a weird tremolo is that it's got a full-size block, and I think it's full thickness, um, but it's a two-pivot tremolo, and the pivot points are just these wood screws that don't have a ferrule that goes into the body. It just screws right into the body, so 
I don't know what I'm going to do with this. This thing is in such bad shape. I may just swap the whole thing out with the Made in Mexico style tremolo and just be done with it. Um, because these unfortunately might be beyond saving. They sure are gross. Uh, this one's being held up by wood, so that's an interesting tactic. Maybe I should stop using screws and just start using chips of wood under my bridge saddles. Yuck. Okay. Um, Alright, well, I don't know what else to do except uh, start to take some of this wiring out. So, that's next. That's ridiculous. I don't know how this thing ever worked. It's all it's wired up all wrong. I think I'll just cut it out. Believe it or not, I did test it and it makes noise. So it didn't make very strong noise because number one, this is direct mounted and it's way way far from the strings, but it made some noise. That's an interesting setup. Got a recess for the switch. I don't know why I bother. It's kind of weird. Let's get that humbucker out of there. I'm not sure where I'll find one of these rings. This is one of those rings with uh, the two holes on one side and one hole on the other, but the two holes are spread really far apart. That might be some of the thinnest wire I've ever seen in my life. Well, uh, <laughs> to my shock, the, uh, the pickups are just uh, completely falling apart, literally. Um, so that's not going to work. Uh, this humbucker is toast, probably. And, you know, the pots and switches are all crap, so... Gosh, I don't know what to do with this thing yet. Um, I still... I'm inclined to try to save it, so I think that's the direction I'm going, but it's not going to be a fun project. Um, all right, well, I guess the last thing is these strap buttons, and then I'll have the body completely stripped, so I might as well do those too. All right, so... Would I recommend trying to save one of these things? I mean, at the point that I'm at right now, I can already say it's probably not worth it. Um, but I will say, it does have a really nice neck, and it actually has a decent body. Um, so, you know, based on those two components alone, you could start a new build with some good parts and maybe make a decent guitar out of it. So. Maybe that's where I'll head with this thing. Uh, we'll just have to see. So, uh, it's torn down for now, and, uh, well, I guess I'll get the tuners off the headstock, but you don't have to watch that. But it's it's torn down for now, and uh, I'll order some parts and see you guys on the next episode. Uh, don't forget, if you like my channel, please like this video and subscribe. I appreciate it. See you next time.